Greetings, Traveler. I'm Snap Jelly, and I'm going to close the window. All right. Greetings, Traveler. I'm Snap Jelly, and a while ago I made a video talking about what weapons would be useful for a giant uh, to use should they exist. And in the comments, you guys have given me a lot of suggestions about what you guys think would be useful weapons for giants to use. So I thought I'd go over some of them and uh, tell you guys what uh, what I think about them. So let's begin. The top comment and many other comments said a scythe uh, because well then you can just swoop, like this guy says sweep them across the battlefield and, and cut the humans down like grass well there are a few problems that I have with uh, using a scythe that way one is potential uneven ground or perhaps even like a rock or a boulder on the ground can make it hard to get a good swing another problem is that humans are most likely going to want to keep distance of the giants, right? And if you have a, a scythe, you need both hands so you can't carry a shield, and which makes you very vulnerable to arrows. Now, it would probably take a lot of arrows to actually kill a giant, but if you get an arrow in the hand or something, then you can't really hold the scythe anymore, and you need two hands to, to, to wield the scythe. Another thing is, giants are potentially stronger com comparatively, right? And if you just scale a scythe up, then with the strength that they would exert with a swing, that would most likely cause the blade to break. So the blade needs to be thicker, which makes it less sharp. And if humans are a bit denser than grasses, so... And especially if they wear armor, like if it's an armored human, and what's going to happen is the scythe is not going to cut through them. It's just going to knock them off their feet, which might still kill them. But in, in that case just using a club would be more useful, I, I think, at least. It is going to be easier to use a club than, than a scythe, because a scythe is kind of a weird thing, and you can only really do one movement comfortably with a scythe. It doesn't really allow many other options, and I think that's a, that's a bit of a problem. The idea is good, but I, I just I don't think it will work. I mean, what you got to keep in mind is a scythe is not a lightsaber. It doesn't just cut through anything it touches. It cuts through grass, because, but grass is not very strong. So, yeah. The second highest comment was a giant-sized armored spiked hamster ball. <laughs> I actually really like this comment. And because, well, it's, it's stupid enough that it might actually, in the right scenario, perhaps work, kind of. Because some very stupid shit has been... Um, implemented in, in warfare in the past successfully, just given the right circumstance. And when we talk about weapons for giants or dwarfs or whatever the heck, we always think about human weapons that were designed for humans, and, you know, people with human sizes, and then we just think, would they work for somebody who's smaller or bigger, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we never think about weapons that were designed for giants or dwarfs. Well, because, well, they don't exist. So actually, I think this is... Uh, I can't imagine this, but there are still a few problems. First off, get rid of the, the spikes. You don't need a spiked hamster ball, just make it a normal hamster ball. Because the spikes are just gonna get stuck on things, and just a giant hamster ball would already be enough to crush a human. You don't need the spikes. Spikes are gonna bother you. So get rid of the spikes. Giant armored hamster ball. One of the problems that I have with this is that Giants are slow, and I'm, I'm assuming that the giants are inside the hamster ball, right? Uh, but giants move comparatively slower because they're bigger. Not only that, but because they're bigger, it also takes longer for their brain to actually get and, and, and send messages to their limbs, so they're going to be even slower to respond, right? So if they go downhill, for example, and the ball starts rolling and rolling and rolling, uh, it's probably not going to take long before the ball starts rolling faster than the giants can run, and then they'll fall on their face inside the ball. Similarly, going uphill is going to be pretty difficult inside a hamster ball. And another thing is they might get stuck. You know, if the hamster ball might get in between a ledge or, or whatever the heck, and then you can't move it anymore, and then you'd have to get out, and it, there needs to be an effective way to get in and out of the damn thing, which the humans could also use. It, it needs to be a hole that's big enough for the giant, so when the hamster ball gets stuck, the humans can just get in through that hole, or throw like a flaming pot in there, or perhaps some snakes or scorpions or something. Like, you can think of all kinds of weird things that, you know, downsides of, of the hamster ball, but I, I honestly, I gotta say, I kinda like it because I can imagine a giant beating a giant group of humans by rolling around. 
like really, really like cuddling up in a ball and just rolling. I I can honestly see that work. So I like it. It's a it's a fun idea actually. That's a, as stupid as it is. It's actually in a way kind of brilliant. The way he says metal boots is just adorable. Thank you, Hawk Gun. I take great pride in the way that I say boots. Giants versus humans. A pretty strong chain. I suppose you mean that you need to swing the chain around above your head and like sweep a large area that way. Uh, that could work if you can build up enough momentum because again the giant is going to be slower so it takes longer for, for the giant to build momentum but when you can get that going that would be really devastating. There would be two downsides that is if, if the human gets uh, close enough for the for the, the reach of the chain to, to not reach him anymore because there's going to be a circle around you that is not hit by the chain, right? If you swing around like that, then uh, you know the human is safe and he, he is free to attack you. And, every, and that way, if he has a spear or something, he can get you in the crotch. Another problem would be, again, potential hills or rocks. If you swing a chain around like that and it hits a hill, then it m would probably stop the momentum of, of the chain. And because the giant is bigger, it would take a while for him to get the momentum going again. So, uh, but if you can get it going, that would probably be devastating. Just, I can see like a human shield wall and then a giant just going like that and whack and crush them all. You would need a pretty hefty chain as well. So it would take a while to get that going, but when you do get it going, I think it could work. Or a fly swatter. If you can make one giant sized, uh, yes, that, I, yes, that could work. <laughs> a lawnmower. Um, yes, that would also work. That's a better idea than the scythe. <laughs> I can tell you that. I want to eat your hair. Makes sense. Giants kicking humans to death? Tell me you've played Myth 2. Nope. I have not. What about some sort of giant-scaled medieval knuckle buster for giant versus giant combat? Um, that's a, actually, that's a pretty nice idea, but I don't think it will work once more because they're slow, right? You, you, can, you can imagine giants to be stronger comparatively than humans are, but still, it's, again, it's gonna take more time for them to build up momentum and possibly not enough to actually get an effective punch in. And there's no real way to tell because, well, giants don't exist. But what I think would be better is just an ordinary dagger because you need something that pierces the skin and causes internal bleeding. Like for human, knuckle dusters are really good because we're fast, we can just go like bam, 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 and if we can land a few punches without hurting ourselves, it's really beneficial to us. But uh, for, for a giant, it would probably be best if they can get one hit in that is, again, relatively slow, but does a lot of internal damage and uh, causes internal bleeding and, and kills the other one. So knuckle busters would be interesting to make a giant boxing match interesting, because if you give them padded gloves, that's just gonna take forever. Um, so, uh, yeah, that. They would have reverse boxing gloves. They would have boxing gloves that would actually do more damage than their actual fists. At least that's what I imagine. What about a rake? Um, I honestly don't know what to say to that. <laughs> it's a better idea than the scythe. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, okay. It's, uh, it's more mobile than the scythe as well that's a that's a plus i honestly can't tell if that would really be an effective tool for for killing i mean try killing a like a hamster with a with a rake and, and tell me how it goes please don't don't do that but you know you get the point what about steamrollers that depends do you mean like a giant steamroller like he's sitting on the steamroller and steering or is he like pushing the steamroller around like it's a toy car? And that's important information, right? You, you need to get back on that. A giant longbow or maybe a crossbow. I think a longbow would be more beneficial than a crossbow because it's quicker and they are already freakishly strong. So that, that longbow is, is, you know, it's, it's stronger than anything else except the ballista. It's just way faster than a ballista. So the crossbow is not, it's not really necessary. A longbow would already be devastating, or just an ordinary bow, actually. A longbow for a human, like a normal bow for a giant. They would already be devastating, like shooting huge arrows. 
that would be great. Or they could use a sling. Uh, yeah, I, I think that could work as well, because then they're essentially just a giant walking, talking trebuchet, if you think about it. Just sling with the flinging around, it's the same concept. Again, there's the momentum thing, but if a trebuchet can do it, a giant can do it too. So yeah, I think a, a, a sling is a good idea. I think it will work. Just keep in mind that when you're slinging it, you're not accidentally hitting your, your fellow giants in the head. That's going to be a bit, uh, a bit annoying. You are the perfect mixture of Skelligrim and Lindy Beige. I think you're excluding the subscriber number on, on that one. But uh, thanks, I, I, I think. I'll, I'll take it as a compliment. Now here's, the, here's an interesting one. Against giants, giants against giants, slower as if both humans were submerged uh, to the neck in water. So that's what this guy's imagining that giant speed would be like, right? Then maybe tridents would move faster in that case. Um, I can see where you're coming from, but here's the thing. You are still slower than you would, than humans would be, right? Than you would be above water. And the thing is, if you are slower, even if you are slower as well, when you see a spear or trident or something incoming like that, it makes it all the easier to grab it by the shaft and avoid getting stabbed. And when that happens, you can just pull, right? And then your opponent would have to either let go of the spear or trident or get closer to you, in which case you can stab with your dagger. That's why I said dagger. Now, there's always people when I mention this going like, but you can't grab a spear by the shaft. It's way too fast. Well, yes, you can grab a spear by the shaft because that's exactly what I do. I'm saying these things because of experience, right? When I'm fighting people who fight me with spears and I have nothing but a single weapon, then what I do is, if needed, I bury the first blow and then grab the spear by the shaft and get in close and attack with my sword. That's what I do in the real time. With giants being slower, that's just gonna be easier. So again, we'll, we'll get, to the, get to the grappling thing and stab him with your dagger. But that's a very, a very interesting comparison that you made there with, with, with the humans being submerged in water. I think that's, that's very smart of you. Would be nice to see this kind of video on dwarves. I am probably gonna make that video soon because um, both Scalagrim and Shadiversity have made videos about that and they have excluded something that I want to include. So that was probably gonna come uh, pretty soon. A whip. I don't think a whip would work. Because again, it's bigger. It's again, harder for the giant to build momentum. And, um, you, you know, I don't think a giant can really be fast enough to get that one, like, that, that crack that you need to, to make a whip effective. And even still, it's just going to be one person at a time that you can really hit with a whip. So that's not a, that's, it's not really the most effective thing. A whip is a good suppressing weapon, like, it hurts a lot. <laughs> I've actually, accidentally on my dad, I have actually been, been whiplashed, like, um, somebody in my group brought a brought a whip with him for fun and he is very accurate with it but he aimed wrong he actually hit me in the butt and those things hurt they a lot but you know they're not lethal it's not a so yeah it's not the smartest thing that's a handsome little fella thank you uh but uh okay two more scythe comments okay that's great what you talking about that a broom out of steel If you can make that, sure, use it. <laughs> I would like to see that. A sling, already covered that. So many more comments. I've already I've been filming for so long. Slingshots, that's a good one. I like that. Just bang, great, way better than a sling. Just a slingshot, it's a great idea. There's so many freaking comments, but I've been filming for so long already. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna stop right here. Okay, lastly, I want to give a quick shout out to another YouTube channel who was just started out called I Post Swords. I, he's a really charismatic dude. And he talks in, in more detail about specific sword designs and he, I think he deserves way more subscribers than he has. So I will leave a link in the description to his channel and I think you should go there and subscribe him if, uh, if, if you like his videos and tell him Snapjelly sent you because whatever, why not? You know, just because. And uh, thank you for joining my quest and I hope you'll join me. And the next one. Bye, guys. I gotta check if the camera's still rolling. Click here to subscribe. Why not? Are you still rolling?
You are, but barely.